sketch reciprocal of linear function. Sketch reciprocal function of linear function y equals to 3 over 2x minus 3. So let us first sketch the function itself and then we will sketch its reciprocal. y equals to 3 over 2x minus 3. It means that y intercept is minus 3. So let's call that to be b. y intercept is minus 3 and the slope is equals to 3 over 2. With that we can sketch the line. Minus 3, 1, 2, 3, that is the point minus 3. Slope of 3 over 2, let's go up 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, right. That also gives us the x-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, right. So these are the points which represent a line given to us, which is y equals to 3 over 2. So we have this line which extends as y equals to 3 over 2, x minus 3. Now we need to find or sketch the reciprocal of this function. While sketching, we'll consider all these points. First one is the vertical asymptote. And then we'll discuss behavior near the vertical asymptote. And then we'll talk about horizontal asymptote, right? And then we'll consider behavior or end behavior, which is behavior near horizontal asymptote. Then we'll talk about invariant points domain, range, and increasing, decreasing intervals. So these are the things which we'll discuss while sketching reciprocal of this linear function. Let's start with vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is when the function has zero, that means the reciprocal will have infinite value. One over zero is not defined, right? So the vertical asymptote will be at x intercept of the function which in this case is at x equals to 2. So we can sketch a vertical line here representing vertical asymptote for the reciprocal function. Okay. Let me also write down our reciprocal function which is let us say g of x which will be equals to 1 over. So I'll write it as such 3 over 2x minus 3. So that is our reciprocal function, right? Now, this line represents the denominator. For vertical asymptote, denominator should be zero. So the line is zero at x-intercept. So that is the point where we have vertical asymptote. And that point is at x equals to 2. Right? So let's write down the equation of vertical asymptote, which is x equals to 2, which is right here, x equals to, x equals to 2. So that is our vertical asymptote. Now, behavior near vertical asymptote means if we are approaching 2 in this case from left or right side, how do the function behave? That is the behavior near vertical asymptote. So, if you substitute a value here, which is like 1.9, close to 2, but less than that, what do you expect? You will get a negative value, right? But since we are approaching 2, it has to be a large value. So, we will get negative large value which you can also see from the graph if function is negative its reciprocal will be negative right so that gives us fairly good idea of the behavior so if the function is negative then its reciprocal will be negative and therefore we expect a negative value negative infinity as we approach from left right so as x approaches 2 from negative side y approaches negative infinity. Now if x approaches 2 from the positive side, then it will approach positive infinity since the value is positive and reciprocal of positive will be positive. Correct? Or you can use calculator, plug in a value here, 2.1 for example. So if I write x as 2.1, 2.1 divided by 2 will definitely be more than 1 and therefore denominator is going to be positive. Positive but small resulting into a larger number. So we get a positive value. So when you approach 2 from positive side, y approaches positive infinity. Right? So that is perfectly fine. As you know, if the line is positive, then its reciprocal will be positive. If the function is negative, then its reciprocal will be negative, and that fits in fairly well. Now let's look into horizontal asymptote. 
Now for horizontal asymptote, what we are really looking at is what happens as x approaches plus infinity and x approaches minus infinity. That means large positive value and large negative value. As you can see, if x is approaching plus infinity, y is approaching negative infinity for the function. So its reciprocal will approach 0 from the negative side. Do you see that? So that is how it is going to approach. But if we plug in a larger positive value here, denominator will be positive and we'll have a small value but it will be positive. So we are approaching 0 from both the sides. So in this case, since we are approaching a fixed value, 0, we say horizontal asymptote is at y equals to 0. Right? So this line itself is our horizontal asymptote which is y equals to 0. So we can sketch the horizontal asymptote with the help of a dotted line. So this represents the horizontal asymptote for us. Now let's look into the invariant points. Invariant points are points where the y value is 1. So if 1 is the value of the function, then its reciprocal will be 1, correct? So from this graph, we can say, well, these are our invariant points. So instead of calculating, plugging in 1 and finding the value, from the graph, we can just point out these points, right? Or otherwise, we can put y as 1 and then calculate for what value of x is y, 1, right? So in this particular case, for y equals to 1, what do we get? We get 1 means 1 equals to 3 over 2x minus 3. So we can bring 3 here, it becomes 4. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 divided by 3 is the value of x. So x equals to 8 divided by 3. That is for positive 1, correct? So x is almost 2 point something less than 3, right? So 1, 2, 3. So it is less than 3. That's fairly accurate, correct? Similarly, if you plug in minus 1 here, so if I write minus 1 here, in that case, I can calculate the value of x as minus 1 plus 3 will give me plus 2. Plus 2 times 2 is 4. 4 divided by 3 will be, let me write 4 over 3 at present, right? So greater than 1, but less than greater than 1 but less than 2, which is kind of here, right? So these are invariant points where the y value is minus 1 and plus 1. That's the whole idea. Now when we say sketch, we are not that accurate, but we are fairly accurate, correct? Now once we have these invariant points, we can sketch our graph. The function looks like 1 over x, a reciprocal function, right? So we'll just connect these points with a smooth curve like 1 over x and then draw it right. So one important point which we have missed so far is actually the y-intercept. So let's put x equals to 0 and find that value also right. And let me add that y-intercept here in the equation itself. This space here, let me write y-intercept. For g of x, that means we are finding g of 0 right. So if I put 0 here, I get minus 1 over 3. So the point which crosses here, I will say this is minus 1 over 3. So that is also a very important point which we can highlight in this particular case, right? So that gives us a good sketch of reciprocal of a linear function. Now from here, we can write down the domain. Domain is all real numbers. So x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 2. There is a vertical asymptote there. Is that okay? And ranges y belongs to real number, but y is not equal to 0, which is the horizontal asymptote, correct? How about increasing and decreasing interval? This is a very important question, and in all the reciprocal functions, it's kind of important to signify which are the intervals of increasing and decreasing. As you see, the function is increasing all the time, right? So this function is increasing. Do you see that? Since the function is increasing, its reciprocal should be decreasing, right, in its domain. Do you see? When you go from left to right, your function is coming down. It is decreasing all the way. Now, there is a discontinuity at 2, 
but after 2, function starts from infinitely large value and decreases to positive 0. So, the function is actually not increasing at all, but it is decreasing. And what is the interval for decreasing? It is from minus infinity to 2, and then I can say union from 2 to plus infinity. So that is the interval in which the function is increasing. The function is not at all decreasing. Since it is a reciprocal of a line which is increasing with the slope of 3 over 2. I hope with this you get fairly good idea of how to sketch reciprocal function for a given linear function. And this knowledge will be utilized in following graphs. Thank you and all the best.